Hello crypto friends, checking in on everything here, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Gollum. First I'll go over what my trades were this morning, just a quick scenario, and then I'll get over the analysis on a couple different time frames as we have had a bearish day today. A lot of pullbacks, a lot of breaks of key supports, but sky's not falling. We'll go over some key levels that need to hold. And it's an interesting setup here, especially on Ethereum as we head into the end of the day with about five and a hours, five and a half hours left to go. So here on Ethereum this morning. Waking up again, I was holding an Ethereum position overnight, so I'm waking up every two hours just to check on it. I like how it breaks up my sleep cycle. I like how it makes my dreams a lot more vivid, and it works for me. I take some naps during the day. So Ethereum was in a bounce attempt, and what we were seeing was this pattern where we had a clear base of support, and we double-topped at 275, but we still held support, and that support was really down at 261. We bounced off of 261 multiple times, set another lower high, and I exited this morning right as this waterfall started. Once we broke this support level, and it was actually not this one, it was this support level, when the low 260s, when it became clear we were going to break because we were increasing bear volume on the way to the downside, I exited right here at about 261. I ate a bit of a loss, not, nothing big, but I always want to cut my losers small to avoid something like this. And I exited because the break of support was coming on increasing bear volume. Normally, I might have been a little bit more lenient because the RSI was about to dip to oversold. This is the 15-minute time frame right now. So knowing that we were going to dip that oversold, normally I may have held off from selling. I'm glad I didn't, obviously. But uh, the reason that I was so confident in selling is because I saw another opportunity approaching and I wanted to jump on it. So I went all cash from a all-in Ethereum. Went all cash at 261, ate that small loss, and then 15 minutes later, I started scaling into Litecoin. And at that point, it was early in the morning, and Litecoin oversold or oversold dump was really good looking because we had the hour or the 15 minute RSI was down under 20 at that point in time. The five minute RSI back then was down. Look at how low we got. Five minute RSI was 11. We almost hit single digits, and all at the same time, the hourly was down at right here in the mid 20s. So all of those things lining up, I was very comfortable starting to scale in to a position in Litecoin. And I started getting filled, I believe my average here was the uh, 4770s. So I did get a, a nice price point. In terms of averaging down, I got some 4780s, 4760s, but averaged it all in. And then I had a little bit left over that didn't get filled. So I, I quickly flipped it and bought a market order to try and get some bullish momentum to the upside. And then from there, I just waited patiently. And my target was a $1 move. And I stuck to that target. And I picked that target just by looking at the hourly time frame and saying, okay, we've dumped significantly. We've seen almost 10 red hours in a row. And if we see a bounce, I'm just looking for a $1 move to the upside because I will anticipate that a lower high is going to form because the hourly time frame is forming lower highs and lower lows. So a short-term bounce, give me my $1 profit. That would make back the loss that I had in Ethereum plus some, and that's all I want to do. That would be a, a perfect start to the morning to me for me to recover losses, make a little bit of profit, and then start the rest of the day after maybe another couple hours of sleep. So that ended up playing out really nicely. I exited at 48.70, 48.80, and I didn't even really look at much else in terms of indicators like, are we going to keep going up or any of that? It hit my target, so I want out. Like, that's all I need. There's my target, good to go. And that was that. So then today, while I was going live, I had a I was playing a bottom fishing. So I saw that we were approaching here. Ethereum was getting pretty beat up and I was watching our key support and the key support on Ethereum. Let's look on the hourly time frame. We had a double bottom of support down here in the 50s, 254.15 and 252.67. So I knew those were two key levels. That's where some support on the daily time frame is. We'll look at that daily chart in just a minute. But that was a key support. So I can say to myself, okay, if we've been holding the support for weeks at this point, I know a lot of traders are watching this level. And I know that if this level breaks, there's going to trigger a lot of stop losses because it is such a clear support that traders are going to put their stop losses just below that level. So when it breaks, it's going to be a magnified waterfall effect. So knowing all of this, I placed some, some fishing bids where I was looking to catch in on all of these stop losses triggering. So I put my stop or I, I put my bids in at the 246s, 245s on the way down. And next thing I know, I look over and I see that we, we did make the bear break. We did see the dump. And look at where the volume started pouring in for the bears. It was after that support level broke when all those stop losses triggered. So I did get filled on the way down. Then GDAX crashed. 
I wasn't sweating because I know the bounces usually begin when GDAX crashes, so I patiently waited for it to come back online, and I was in the red very briefly as we did dip down to 240. Could have gotten a better position, not going to worry about it because I am happy with the fill that I got, and then I just patiently waited, and on this first bounce to the upside, let's look at it on the 15-minute time frame. So my goal was to exit in the 248s to 249s. That was just the target for my trade. Again, I'm just quick flipping here because we do have a lot of bear momentum, so we saw the first initial bounce that made it all the way up to 249.50. I exited one third of my position. That's all I could get off by the time we pulled back. So I got out a third of the position. We pulled back. I was then looking for higher lows and higher highs to be established. A little bit scary here, but what kept me in conviction of my trade was knowing that the hourly RSI at this point was very beat up again. So here's the hourly RSI. We were down at 24 and the 15 minute was oversold. The five minute was oversold. So I was not too worried. The four hour chart was just about to be oversold. So I knew that if we did see another leg to the downside and did break 240, it wouldn't be a $15 collapse. It would be maybe a few more dollars to the downside before the oversold bounce really got going. So knowing that I had already exited a third of my position gave me some more comfortability. And I just patiently waited with the same target, looking for the hourly bounce to begin developing. And then once we saw this green candlestick here, knew that I was going to get my target and I exited. Same thing. I don't care that we went up to 250, 276. I don't care that I could have gotten another $3 had I held on. Hit my target, locked in my profit, and now after those couple of trades, cut one loser and then make two bounce plays, I'm, I have a profit that I'm happy with today. So look at this now as we're speaking here. Look at this support line on the daily time frame. This is the horizontal support line. We're back testing a perfect back test and rejection from that level. So that 5267 support, the high of this bounce, 522276. And then we're pulling back. So previous support now acting as resistance. Top of the bounce is in for now. And we'll look at the daily time frame now. And then I'll switch over to the other tickers. That wraps up the trade re review. So what we have here on this daily pattern is the descending triangle. This is the horizontal baseline that all the stop losses were triggered underneath. We just back tested and rejected from it. So I'm watching very closely over the next five and a half hours. Because this daily chart, even though we did break that support, we can still close above this level and keep it as support, depending on whether or not we close above or below, let's call it 253. So the goal for the bulls is to close above 253 and still stay in this pattern with a lower wick. We've dipped below it in the past and stayed in this pattern, so that is still a possibility that we're going to be keeping an eye out for. If we close today below 253, it is a bearish break, and the next supports that I'm looking for on Ethereum, let's look at the four hour chart to get them condensed. I'm looking down at 240, the lowest price we saw on this pullback right now. Then I'm looking down at 220, which is the low of one of these candlesticks on the bounce, then 211, and then 206. So 240, 220, 211, 206. Those are the four support levels that stand out to me, and those are the targets that we're going to have if we cannot get back over this resistance level that we are currently back testing and rejecting from. So the bears are taking momentum. A lot of people with their theories, you know, ICOs, people cashing out of Ethereum, and really it's all speculation. I don't care why we're going down. You know, if I'm fundamentally long and I'm not basing things off the charts, then I would care, which I'm not at the moment. So I am only looking at what the chart is telling me, and the chart is telling me there's some selling pressure. I don't care why it's happening. I just know that it's happening, and I will look to be very quick on my trade flips while we are in a downtrend, and I can hold longer when we're in an uptrend, but we are not anywhere near an uptrend right now, so just patiently waiting. So we'll see. I'm probably going to ride it out here for the rest of the day in terms of trades, not going to make any more trades, going to see how things settle down, see how we close relative to that level. And then we'll be watching 240 overnight if we can't get back over 253. So checking in on Bitcoin. Bitcoin also saw some weakness. Here was a clear break of a pattern where we had a resistance line, an uptrend support line, not quite an ascending triangle because this is a downsloped resistance line. It's not horizontal. Pretty close. But we saw a clear break. And look at this perfect back test and rejection. So ETH and BTC are giving us two perfect examples of breaking a key support level, back testing and rejecting from it as resistance, and then seeing continuation to the downside. So we're seeing an oversold bounce here as well on Bitcoin. And if you saw one of the videos I did maybe two, two videos ago, we pointed out the bull break where we got over 26.05 and we broke the lower high pattern, broke the descending triangle pattern bullish. And after seeing a few green days in a row, I've said something like we could 
easily pull back and then we'll look to form a higher low. So the bulls are still holding on here in the sense that we do still have a higher low pattern intact unless we break 2385. The bulls have a lot of wiggle room here. So we are looking for another higher low to be established to keep these bulls in control of the daily time frame. We can also draw an uptrend support line to be keeping an eye on. I would use the low of this initial consolidation way back in May. And I draw an uptrend line making sure no candlesticks close below it. And I would stick it right there, and we're coming up on that uptrend support line. So these lines are getting a little bit cluttered, but I like all those patterns that I've drawn so far. So I'm going to leave them because I know what they stand for. But that would just be an uptrend line that I would be keeping an eye on on the daily time frame as well. And we'll see if we get a entry from that point. I'm also watching the four-hour time frames on all of these names to see when we get oversold. I'm a lot more comfortable with longer-term entries, longer-term meaning more than you know an hour or two. I'm more comfortable with them when the four-hour chart is oversold. So here we are at this support support line. We'll see if we keep heading down to it as the bulls saw a nice oversold hourly bounce. Our new resistance here is 25.35, and we're heading back down towards support. So all of these names, oversold bounces, are playing out, and now we are coming back down to the lows of that dump. And we see the big upper wick getting bigger and bigger here on Ethereum. So checking in on Litecoin now. Litecoin has a downtrend resistance line on the hourly time frame. We've touched it three times, making it a valid downtrend resistance line. In terms of support, the next level that I was looking at was right here, the low of this consolidation. We built the base of support at 45.36, 45.51, and we bounced just now on our dump at 45.67. So a little bit of a higher low. We bounced above that level. And this is the clear support that I'm looking at from here because if we break that level, I'm then looking down at 43.13. So there's not, there is a decent amount of space in between each higher low that we formed on the way up because it was such a powerful move on the way up. So in between each support level, as soon as we break one, it's a pretty decent amount of downside before we hit the next one. So looking back here at where a previous support was, it was right here, this consolidation low. We lost that level and saw further downside and we've now rejected from it on a back test a couple times so from where we currently stand our lower high was just established and you can see every oversold bounce is just another lower high which is why i'm so quick to lock in my profit because i know we're just going to keep setting lower highs for now 4874 new resistance and we're heading back down towards support the low of the pullback so right now where we currently stand the key resistance is the high of the bounce attempt we have to break that to break the lower high pattern the key support is the low of the most recent dump that we've seen. And then we're going to be looking at other support levels further out, looking at previously at consolidation lows for if we do break the low of our current pullback sometime tonight. So the bears are in control. We're seeing consolidation across all the altcoins. We're seeing it across the big three here, which is what I call these three. And you can see Gollum is pulling back very significantly. We broke a key support level here on Gollum. We had support down at 16.5. We were holding it and then it broke. So this is definitely a bearish indication in the short term. We're losing the higher low pattern on the daily time frame. That's a red flag. And an indication for that was a bearish break of the inside bar. So look here, we had an inside bar, a second inside bar that shows the tightening range. If you were to zoom in on the hourly time frame, it would show you the equilibrium pattern of higher lows and lower highs. We had a bear break and it's been followed by two days to the downside. Let's look at some of these other names. What did Litecoin do on the daily time frame with its inside bar? As soon as we broke $50, that was a bear break of the inside bar, indicating that today would more likely than not be bearish. That's how it played out. Ethereum, let's see how we did on the daily time frame here. And actually, it was it was Bitcoin that was the other one, not Ethereum. But another inside bar on the daily time frame, giving us a clear bear signal. As soon as we broke 2580 that was a bearish indication that today was most likely going to be a red day. And it's followed through really nicely just like on the way up, we've seen some follow through really nicely on these bull breaks of these inside bars. Now on the way down, it's nice follow through on the bear breaks. So we're looking at Gollum. We're not oversold on the daily time frame, but we're not too far from it. The four hour chart did get oversold. RSI was down under 30. We're seeing a bounce play out right now, an oversold bounce. Hourly time frame has just been lower highs and lower lows for quite some time. We're going to set a lower high on this bounce, and then we're going to have to form a higher low and then a higher high to try and give convincing momentum that it is more than just an oversold bounce. On any oversold bounce, if you cannot set a higher low and then a higher high, you know that the bulls don't have too much strength, and we are likely to see another lower low come with the bears remaining in control.
So that's what we've got as we head into the weekend. Again, my trading right now is way scaled back. When we're bullish and there's opportunity to the upside, I'm a lot more active and I'm striking while the iron is hot, so to speak. And while we're on a downtrend move, I made one trade yesterday, a little bit more active this morning because I've been bouncing around to different opportunities, but way more cautious, way quicker to lock in profit. It's a completely different trading scenario. The last thing you want to do, I'm still coming across a lot of people who even are familiar with the videos that I put out, but they still are bag holding in the sense that the trade got away from them because they didn't honor a stop level, they didn't ever have a stop level, or they didn't have a game plan for the trade. Before you ever hit the buy button, you should know what your target to sell is, what's your level where if we hit it, you exit and take all your money, and that's how you establish consistency in this game. If you're just winging it and making decisions on the fly, I promise you, you're going to be selling at the bottom and you're going to be buying at the top. Your emotions are going to take over and dictate your decisions. And if you are sticking to your game plans, you know before you ever enter the trade exactly how much you can possibly lose on the trade and knowing exactly what your risk is, is a game changer. I used to not use stop losses. I used to get stuck in trades. I used to trade penny stocks when I first started. And I would be bag holding for a very long time and eat some big losses. You know, I could make, I could have a, a brilliant week and go seven for 10 and be up big. And then one trade, because I didn't have any stop loss level and it got away from me, would give all of that back and then some. So as soon as I learned that I need to have a stop level on every single trade, it was a game changer for me in terms of consistency, in terms of profit, and in terms of the size of my losses significantly shrinking. So if there's anything that you take away from this video, it is that you need to have a stop level. Even if it's not a hard stop written in, have, have it in your mind at, at the very least. Even then, that allows for emotions to potentially override your decision and let you hold when that support breaks. I certainly suggest stop limits. And a stop limit for me, let's say Ethereum, I want a stop limit. I would do something like, let's say that 251 break or that it was 252. I would put a stop loss at two, let's say 249 because I want 250 psychological to have a chance to hold. Stop loss at 249 limit at 235. That's plenty of room where I can still stop out and I will likely stop out. But if for some reason it's a flash crash, it will skip my order by dumping significantly and it will prevent me from getting a really bad fill. So that's my advice and stop losses. Have the game plan for every single trade that you make. I appreciate you watching. Have a great weekend. I'll be back sometime soon.